Hello, friends. It is so good to have you with us here at Kensington Community Church for our worshipful experience. On this, on the 17th Sunday following Pentecost, it is my prayer that you and yours are safe and healthy and well, and that we have continued this week to do our part to be part of the solution to stem the tide of the pandemic by wearing our mask and washing our hands, keeping to physical distancing standards, keeping in our hearts and lifting in our prayers those who have been most affected by COVID-19. And it is my hope this day, sisters and brothers, as we gather for our worshipful experience, that you know that you, that no matter who you are or where you come from or wherever you are in your journey through life, that you are loved so much by God, you are loved so much here at Kensington Community Church, and that you feel the presence of the risen Christ and are lifted up by the Holy Spirit this day. Our ministry and mission continues here in Southern California and San Diego and even around the world, and there are many ways for you to connect up with our mission and ministry here at Kensington Community Church. You can read our prayers and announcements on the front page of our website, kensingtonucc.com, but there are a few things that we would like for you to hear and to see this day, so I encourage you, sisters and brothers, to watch our morning announcements. Hello and welcome to this week's announcements. KCC has continued to serve at Rachel's house and a big thank you to all who have continued to help. We have everything we need for today's service, September 27th, but be thinking about how you can help in October for the Spud Bowl inspired meal. Please contact Sarah if you have anything to add to the menu or would simply like to help serve. KCC is continuing to partner with the San Diego Youth Services this month to help fill in where they are short of critical items such as household and cleaning supplies, as well as gift cards and snacks for the kitchen. Thank you to all of you who have already donated and reached out. Please consider helping our youth in some way in this time of great loss and uncertainty during the COVID-19 pandemic. You can continue to drop off supplies to KCC this coming week or consider a financial donation in an effort to provide much needed items to SDYS. Sunday School Online is in full swing. Pre-K through kindergarten meets each week at 9 a.m. while the first through 12th graders meet on the second and fourth Sunday of the month. Please take a few moments to drive by the church today, Sunday, September 27th, between 9 and 11 a.m. or 4.45 to pick up Sunday school supplies for the month of October. If you can't make it, no problem. Just contact Barb to arrange another time. Lastly, today, if you have a first through sixth grader, they will be making chocolate chip cookies using the recipe and supply list from the Rally Day Packet. There is still so much happening in the life of our congregation. As a reminder, more information, Zoom links, and details can be found in your weekly chimes and on the KCC website. Have a blessed week, all. Friends, it is my hope that you found a way for you to use your gifts and resources to give back to the good people of our community and into our world to truly bring forth the good fruit of God's peaceful reign through our behaviors and actions and efforts, as well as ways for you to nurture your own faith this day through our many opportunities in our faith programs for the children and the youth and adults alike. As we begin our worship formally this day, I want to remind us that until Wednesday, September 30th, we are still collecting items for the the youth at San Diego Youth Services. I want to say thank you to those who have already uh, donated cash or gift cards or socks or backpacks and such. Especially want to lift up Estelle Trzinski and her wonderful group of quilters who made this wonderful, beautiful quilt for uh, youth at San Diego Youth Services. It is truly a labor of love and is a beautiful gift that I know will be a blessing to one of the youth of our city and our community. I also want to lift up those who have participated in the wonderful uh, fundraiser for Cambodian Village Fund, Sandy, uh, Kensington Community Church, uh, donated money on your behalf to this wonderful international partner uh, which educates and transforms young women's lives through the power of education. They are also still doing their fundraiser through September 30th, and if you'd like to go to the Cambodian Village Fund website, 
uh, and participate in their matching grant, uh, you may do so through the end of the month. Uh, Both of these are wonderful opportunities for us to use our gifts and graces to help and to truly lift up somebody's life uh, in the name of Christ and through uh, the spirit of love that binds us all together. And it's in that spirit of love this day that we go to God in a word of prayer, lifting up our hearts and taking a moment to rest in God's mystery of God's grace and everlasting love as we also dedicate these items for the goodness and the blessedness of God's peace and love and grace and compassion. Let us go to God now in a word of prayer. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. We pause in reverence before the gift of self, The vessel shatters and the divine sparks shines through, O God, and our solitary self links with yours. For what we are, we are by sharing, and as we share, we move towards your light. May we find our life so precious that we cannot but share it with others, O God, that the light, that your light, may shine brighter through us than a thousand suns, and with your presence among us, we may be your light in our world. May the one who causes peace to reign in the high heavens cause peace to descend on us this day and all of our tomorrows. And all of God's children said, Amen. Gracious and loving God, we give you blessings and thanks this day, for it truly is the day that you have made. I thank you for the generosity of your servants who have given back a little of themselves to help the youth of our community through these wonderful donations of cash and gift cards, of socks and backpacks, of food and treats and this wonderful, beautiful labor of love and this beautiful quilt that the women of our church have made. We ask, O God, that your blessing would be upon it, that they would be a blessing to those who receive it, that they would know that your light shines in their life and that we and you are ever with them. Bless them and bless us this day. This we pray in your Son's holy name and all of God's children said, Amen. He's got the hope in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands she's got the sun and the moon in her hands she's got the sun and the moon in her hands she's got the sun Our sacred story today for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is found in the Apostles Paul's letter to the churches of Philippi. I will be reading verses 1 through 11 of the second chapter. Listen for the word of God for you this day, for God is still speaking. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy, Complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united, and agreeing with each other. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude That was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and by becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death of a cross. Therefore, God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names so that at the name of Jesus everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth might bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. 
The word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's good to see all of you today. God wants us to come together as one mind and spirit, to have one purpose, to share in one love. He is asking us to do that through something called humility. It means acting like you are not super important. It means not bragging about good deeds. God is saying, don't be prideful. When I read about this, I felt confused. I had questions. I wondered, could I think about myself at all? Could I think about or talk about any of my good deeds ever? Was talking about them the same as bragging about them? But then I found this great quote from C.S. Lewis, the author who wrote The Chronicles of Narnia, and it helped me understand what God is asking of us, what God is asking of me. Here's the quote. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Now, when I read that, I I got it. I felt relieved. I felt like, phew, okay, now now I know what God wants me to do. So, So let me break it down for you. God still wants you to know your talents and abilities. In fact, God knows that you can't help others and help the world if you don't know what you got, right? So take time to explore what you offer the world. Make a list. It's okay to write it down on paper. In fact, it's really helpful. God knows that, and God wants you to understand yourself first. So write it down, make it official. Then talk to your grown-ups about it. Ask for their help. And yes, you can absolutely feel proud about your abilities and your accomplishments. But after that, don't sit around on your couch thinking about how great you are. (laughs) It's time to take action. Think about how your talents can help someone else or a lot of people. Find people with talents that are different from yours. You can combine them. Then put all of those together and help one person right now, today. Get moving. Because there are people who need you right now There is much work for you to do in this world today. This is how you can complete God's joy. Let us pray. Dear God, our journey to show humility is difficult, and we need your love more than ever. Help us discover our talents. Help us find like-minded folks Help us put our talents to good use in this world and protect others first. In this way, we are one. We are one mind and spirit and one force of love in your name. And all God's children said, Amen. Thanks for being with me here today, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.
Sisters and brothers, it has been a week. I feel like I have been through a ringer, and I know from my pastoral care visits and my, and, and my phone ringing and the texts coming in and emails being received that you feel, many of you feel the exact same way. I feel like I have just been through the ringer, and really what was just the shot to the gut that just made me crumble after all everything else that happened this past week was reading a story on the NPR app about the 380 pilot whales in Australia that have been beached and died. I don't, I don't know what it was about this particular story among all the other things that have been going on, but it was sort of the, cam- the straw that broke the camel's back. I have this theory that everyone, just about anyone, can deal with one thing, maybe even two or three things pretty well. We human beings across time and space and cultures are actually a fairly robust and sturdy animal. We have evolved to be pretty good problem solvers, and we are able to take on a, two, or take on a thing or two or three or four. But eventually, things just stack on top of each other, and the weight just gets to be too much. And this past week, at least for me, was a little much. And I know that many of you feel the same. Now, sisters and brothers, I got a good chin. I can take a shot. I don't have a glass jaw. I am no wilting flower. But if I look weary and beaten this day, it's because I feel like I have gone 15 rounds with the bronze bomber, Joe Lewis. In the first couple of rounds of this week, I took a really good left-right combo. The left was the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was a hero of mine and was a person of deep faith, deep faith in God and deep faith in her country. The right came when it was followed by the blatant and ridiculous partisan hypocrisy coming from Washington. And I was staggered by those two things. In many ways, though, I feel like the second punch, the right, that second hint, it's all on me. I should have had my gloves up. I should have been protected. Alas, I got caught unawares, and it clocked me real good, and it hurt me. Then I took a double uppercut coming out of Louisville, Kentucky, the home of Muhammad Ali and a city that I just adore. The first uppercut was from the total lack of justice for Breonna Taylor and her family in Louisville and how it now seems that the reformation of policing for black and brown lives and the reestablishment of an equitable due process of law for the poor and people of color just seems to go and be a long way off. Our moment is not turning into the movement that we hoped it would be. Add to that, my heart broke. It just absolutely shattered for the families of the police officers who were killed in Louisville in the aftermath of the grand jury's decision. Sisters and brothers, we must stop killing each other. Police officers must stop killing black and brown people, and armed citizens must stop retaliating with violent acts of vengeance. We must be better. Lord Jesus, help us to be better, I pray. But I didn't go down. I was rocked, but I still stood. And then I took, bam, bam, two quick jabs to the nose. The first jab was when we crossed over 200,000 Americans who have died from the coronavirus. The second jab that came right after it was when over a million global citizens have died from COVID-19. This virus is an admirable opponent in so many ways, and it has vexed us, and it has affected so many people on so many levels. My soul is bruised. My spirit is battered at this point, and now my legs are starting to become noodles. And then, on top of everything else, my dog, Willow, gets explosive diarrhea and has had it all week, which means that I have gotten no sleep 
all through since last Friday, meaning I haven't slept well and my corner, my corner people have not been allowed to the time to get me ready to get me back into the fight for the next round. And then came the crushing blow, a shot to the gut of reading the story about all of those whales who have died on those Tasmanian beaches. And I went down. And I could hear the words of Howard Cosell ringing in my head. Down goes Kistler. Now please, don't turn the sermon off. I promise there's good news coming. I just thought I'd be real with you for a moment. This week has kind of gotten to me. And I know that it's kind of gotten to you too. But if there is any encouragement in Christ any comfort and love, any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy, Paul writes, be joyfully united and of the same Spirit. And I don't think the Apostle Paul had in mind the old adage that misery loves company. I think what the Apostle has in mind is that we ought to be united in a spirit of love for each other and lean into the hope even when things seem hopeless and live Christ-inspired lives grounded in the principle of humility that collectively and individually we ought to cultivate a sense of awe, awe for the beauty and grace and blessedness that is consistently and constantly revealed to us even in the midst of all the chaos that swirls around us, that we ought to lean into a faith that is relational and grounded in the trust that God is ever-present, ever-with us, and drawing us out of the shadow of the valley of death and bringing us ever into the light of God's love and guiding us by God's countenance into a new day to live into a new creation. That even when our rational mind, and let's be honest, sometimes our irrational mind, and all of our scientific observations and our technological calculations, that we cannot fathom how we're going to get through this, that we know that there is a deeper truth that helps us absorb our losses and offers a vision for a path forward. That even though the ground literally shook beneath our feet here in Southern California due to a minor earthquake, that we have been shown and taught and given a wisdom that places us on a solid foundation that helps us meet the challenges of the day as we live boldly and hopefully into our tomorrows. For as the classic hymn proclaims, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Paul is still sheltering in place. Paul is in his prison cell. And from that cell, he offers powerful words to his friends in the church in Philippi and through them to us. And the power of Paul's words are drawn from a deep well of wisdom from his own Jewish upbringing and his belief in the redemption of God through one particular Jew, Christ Jesus. Paul implores his friends, as we have heard Kamer Reed read for us this day, to be in right relationship with one another. And that that rightness of that relationship are to be fashioned after the likeness of God who was revealed to us in Christ Jesus. In Jesus, we meet a God whose mercy is ever-present even in the midst of disaster. We meet a God who is tenacious, unrelenting in God's solidarity with humankind, supporting our yearning to grow towards love and generosity, compassion and peace. Even in the midst of calamity, especially in the midst of of calamity, God is unrelenting in God's solidarity with us. Paul offers the people of Philippi and to us this beautiful hymn, the hymn that's called the hymn of humility or the kenosis hymn, to be, and it truly is, a song of hope. The song has a melody that is so easy for us to sing, and it compels us to transform our song out of the jangled discords to be a sweet harmony of oneness. This melody and harmony reaches out towards the heavens and reaches out towards each other, declaring a faith and trust in God whose steadfast love endures forever, whose steadfast solidarity with humankind is the source of Paul's abiding basis of hope and is a call to action in the face of all trials and tribulations. From his prison cell, 
Paul embodies a trust and an awareness of God's mercy that propel him to turn away from his preoccupation with selfness to a, to, toward a, a, an attitude and a vision of selflessness. Let me say that again. God's mercies propel Paul to turn away from the preoccupation of selfness to, toward a vision of selflessness toward a generosity for a world burst out of Christ's humility. And Paul calls on the Philippians, and therefore to us this day, into covenantal relationship with one another as God has renewed the covenantal relationship with all of humanity and indeed all of creation in the person of Christ Jesus. And with these covenantal relationships with God and neighbor comes responsibilities. Let me turn to Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes of Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, just for a bit of clarity. Reverend Haynes puts it this way. God willfully and wantonly desires to enter into the human condition, and this can be, done no, this can be nothing but the product of God's own willingness to practice downward mobility. We humans value upness. We always are looking for upward mobility to get ahead, to get above, and some of us don't care how many people or things we need to step on, disregard, or ignore to achieve our upness. But what distinguishes God's godness, if you will, is that God employs a very unique, strat- very unique strategy of downward mobility. God does not ignore the human condition, but enters into the human condition fully and willingly. In Jesus, We have a person, a rabbi, a sage, a savior, who is willing to get down in the muck and mire of all out of a desire to save us from ourselves, love us in spite of ourselves, and able to show us how we ought to love each other. And with each act of love, whether it be prayer or protest, speaking words of comfort or speaking words of truth to power, raising money for mission or putting our money where our heart is, We participate in being co-creators with God and establishing God's new creation. This love saves us from our plight by lifting us up, not to fill out our business portfolio, but to make us about the business of beloved community where we live in the bounds of Christian love, charity, grace, and a just and equitable peace. So sisters and brothers, let me bring it home to you like this. When we get knocked down due to the struggle of life, we do not have a God who stays up in the luxury boxes or even in the good seats at ringside, but God climbs into the ring of life with us and his son, Christ Jesus, gets down on the mat next to us and coaxes us up back onto our feet, heals our battered and bruised souls, and we beat the 10 count. We are not knocked out. The good news is not that there won't ever be bad news. It's that in the midst of bad news, there is still good news. And sometimes we have to go deeper to find that love and hope and peace. We have to go to a deeper truth. Reading the headlines of the whales dying on those Australian beaches was a spiritual shot to the solar plexus, and I crumbled. But once I got past the headlines, and actually opened the story to read it, I found the hope and the love that I was looking for. Yes, tragically, 380 pilot whales have died, and that is an immense loss. And so we name that loss, and we mourn their deaths. But over 80 whales have been saved. And I couldn't help but hear the ancient yet sacred words of Jewish wisdom that say, if you save one life, you save the entire world. I read further that over 500 volunteers have come out each and every day. Citizens from Australia and New Zealand and indeed from around the world have gone to those Tasmanian beaches to rescue as many whales as they can. And I am reminded of the wisdom of one Reverend Fred McFeely Rogers who says, look for the helpers and there you will find God. But before we allow these wondrous axioms of wisdom to become watered-down memes void of any depth, let us not forget that we are also called upon to be helpers in other ways, to prevent such tragedies from happening in the first place, to save as many lives as possible before they're even put in tragic situations. Marine biologists have said that those whales that were returned upon the waters uh, into open waters ought to make a full recovery. But then those same marine biologists called on world leaders to quiet the oceans because it is a loud and noisy ocean, which is the, probably the most likely culprit that the whales got beached in the first place. 
They pleaded with us, everyday citizens of the world, like you, like me, like us, to not sit idly by and let this happen again, but that they sought our help to save as many lives as possible. And that sounds like a pretty Christian thing to do, saving lives. To reach out by, by, we do this by reaching out to our policymakers and our commerce leaders, calling on them to quiet the oceans so that our marine sisters and brothers who call the oceans home may be saved and live in peace. Whether these marine biologists know it or not, they are echoing the Apostle Paul who calls on us to be helpers, to humble ourselves like Christ, think of others, watch out for what, it, what is better for others, to make adjustments to our own lives so that we can save the countless lives of our neighbors and be co-creators with God in establishing a new creation. And here is the profound truth. I was down this week. That's just being real. But watching these volunteers and these marine biologists, watching their Jesus-like compassion for these whales that were suffering to help, them, to help them and to save them, helped me get up off from my mat and to carry on. I was inspired by the good work of these good and kind and compassionate people who were taking a downward mobility heart set. And these agents of Christ lifted my spirits and filled me with hope. Think of others, the Apostle Paul says, and watch how you will be blessed. If there is any encouragement in Christ, let us take on the heart of Jesus. Be a little bit more downwardly mobile, thinking of others, praying for them, helping them as we can, and bearing good fruit of God's peaceable realm. And trust me, let me be real. This will lift us up. It will raise our heads with pride. It will fill our hearts with love. And it will lift our spirits with hope. It is a paradox. To be downwardly mobile gives us some upness. It is a blessedly gospel paradox. That it's in giving that we receive. It's in being broken that we're made whole. It's in humble service that we gain the kingdom. And it's in dying to the self that we gain eternal life. And that is the good news this day. Amen, amen, and amen. Sisters and brothers, let us go to God now in a word of prayer, holding in our hearts and lifting in our prayers this day. Those who are ailing of body, mind, and spirit, particularly those who are struggling and battling cancer and those who have been so affected by the coronavirus and COVID-19. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We ask God's comfort and God's strength and God's grace to be upon them in this time of grief and mourning. We pray for our sisters and brothers in Louisville and those of the, and, and, and Brianna Taylor's family, the families of those police officers who were killed this past week. Uh, we pray for peace and we pray for justice to be done. We continue to pray for a reformation and a transformation of policing and law enforcement tactics so that our sisters and brothers who are of black and brown skin may truly know that their lives not only matter, but they are beloved and that they get equal treatment under the law. We pray for those who have been affected by natural disasters, fires here in the West, hurricanes in the Gulf Coast, and those around the world this day who are so struggling, struggling for ends meat, for food, for shelter, for clean water to drink. Let us go to God now in a word of prayer. Much of the prayer that I lift up this day comes from a beloved predecessor of mine here at Kensington Community Church, the Reverend Lou Wargo. So using the words from Brother Lou, let us go to God in a moment of humility, leaning and resting on God's grace and mercies, as we ask God to act through us to bring the answer to our prayers to fruition. Oh God, we are tired. Life's journey can sometimes get very difficult. There always seems to be more to do than time to do it. And we get pulled in so many different directions and we get tired of the responsibilities. Some of us grow weary of growing old 
As eyesight dims and sounds become more difficult to discern, it gets harder to do even the simplest of things. And yet, O oh God, we cannot complain, but you see into our heart and you feel our hurts, so we bring them to you. We wouldn't ask for any miraculous changes, only for a measure of your strength and a renewed sense of hope. Take us where we are right here and now and lead us to where you have us to go. We are also tired of feeling alone and our sheltering in place, but we also know that exile feel is often self-imposed. So pull out of ourselves and reach into us so that we may step outside, O God, with courage and with faith. God, we seem to live in a crazy mixed up world and maybe that's why we often feel so tired. More questions than answers, more problems than solutions, more needs than resources. Calm us, comfort us, quiet us. Give us the wisdom to pause, to listen, and to hear again the still small voice whispering low, I am always with you. Refresh us and renew us so that we might take up the journey once again and walk with strength and courage into the unknown boldly. This we pray in your son's holy name this day as we lift up our prayers for strength and comfort, wisdom and guidance, peace and justice in our lives and in our world. We do so for he taught us to bring everything to you in prayer when Christ Jesus taught us these ancient and sacred words to pray. Our God who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Save us from times of trial. Deliver us from all that is evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our worshipful experience on this, the 17th Sunday following Pentecost, is coming to a close. And so it is my hope that a word, a song, a prayer this day has made it well with your soul, lifted your hearts, filled your spirits up, inspired you to go forth in your life and to give back and to help others in their times of need to bring forth the peaceable reign of God into our midst and be co-creators with God into the new creation which God is creating in our midst. But now as our worship service is winding down, I invite you to receive your benediction this day. Sisters and brothers, may God bless you, may God keep you. May God's love and light and countenance shine upon you and guide your path through life. May you see God face to face and may you feel God in your heart this day. 
May we receive the gift of grace. Grace enough to risk something big for something good so that we may have peace today and all of our tomorrows. This we pray in the name of the God who was and is and will be forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen. Our worshipful experience has come to an end, but our service now begins. You know what that means. It means that it is time for the love of God and neighbor to put on our masks, to wash our hands, to keep to physical distancing standards so that we may go forth in our lives and serve God and serve our neighbors with peace and love in our hearts.